you know the best art comes from it's like in 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 buddhism where they call it mara and then in hinduism they call it the lila which is the divine play and the divine the divine drama is basically the polarities uh coexisting with one another which is you know you have to acknowledge that the shadow exists in unison with the light like they both and this is what i've talked to jen about this before when i think of beauty like when i think of intrinsic beauty i think it I think of it as happiness and sadness and love and pain in balance. You know, like when I, when I, when I listen to a song that's really, truly beautiful or when I listen to, or when I, I read a book that is, is really, really, truly beautiful, it has the suffering in there. You know, it has the, the, that beautiful journey of the light and the shadow, because I mean, how do you get to that place? Mm. How do you get to that place of understanding unless you've gone to the depths of, what I guess the absence of that would be, you know? Yeah. We got to yeah. challenge yourself. Have you heard of uh, the imperfect piano with, that Keith Jarrett does the Colm concert? Oh yeah. no. What is that? And What's he that? has to do a concert an improvisational jazz concert to 4,000 people somewhere in Colm, Germany, I believe. And he gets there and he doesn't have the right piano. It's not tuned. He says, I won't play. I won't play. And because the girl, the organizer begged and pleaded, he said, fine play mm. but don't expect anything great and out of that untuned bad piano came the most sold piano album ever mm. wow. <laughs> yeah and when you listen to it it has this what you're saying where it has the sadness it has the happiness it yeah. has you can hear him tr struggling with the piano but through that struggle comes comes amazing music and ultimately like unending fame yeah. you remember that that piano we had in our house that i painted um, I painted red. It was uh, Ryan's grandmother's piano. And when she passed away, nobody in the family wanted the piano. So he was like, hey, do we have a spot for it? I was like, sure do. Bring that piano on over here. So I painted it. And then Eric came over one night and played it. <laughs> and it was so out of tune. Oh, it yeah. sounded like a haunted house like, <laughs> like the haunted mansion it yeah, the haunted mansion it was like <laughs> he was like this piano's really out of tune i was like yeah i could tell <laughs> yeah that was the best out of tune piano i played yeah, though it was good it have, was good have you heard of oblique strategies no no what the is idea that? is to read a card that, like so you want to saw i want to learn how to do i want to learn how to do better podcasts or i want to learn how to speak without saying like and um or whatever mm -hmm. And then you address that problem and you turn over a card and it says, how do you build a wall without bricks? That's all it says. And you have to apply that thought to your desire to not, to, to not use hesitation words or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, your brain suddenly switches a little bit, just thinks of the problems obliquely and mm -hmm. slightly different. It just mm -hmm. makes a different pathway. Yeah.